This is a piece that comes from the Gulhane Proclamation, which means the Rose Chamber, because it was proclaimed in the Rose Chamber of the Royal Palace in Istanbul. All the world knows that in the first days of the Ottoman monarchy, the glorious precepts of the Quran and the laws of the empire were always honored. The empire in consequence increased in strength and greatness, and all her subjects, without exception, had risen in the highest degree to ease and prosperity. In the last 150 years, a succession of accidents and diverse causes have arisen which have brought about a disregard for the sacred laws and the regulations flowing therefrom, and the former strength and prosperity have changed into weakness and poverty. An empire, in fact, loses all its stability so soon as it ceases to observe its laws. What exactly is the most important part of this document? What is the focus here? They're talking about change. What sort of change in their perception is taking place and why? And students usually respond with the focus on law, the fact that somehow there was this ideal time in Ottoman history where everything functioned well and things are going badly because we have not been obeying the law or running the empire according to the law. And so I ask, do you think this is a forward-looking document or is it a backward-looking document? And usually the response is that it looks at a golden time and it seeks the recovery of that golden time. And this is a very traditional, very old-fashioned way of writing about reform. This is something the Ottomans had written about over and over again. So then I ask, what is new about this document? Why is it called a proclamation, a reform document? Why is it part of this movement to reform and reorder the empire? And so as they read the rest of the document, they find that the prescriptions for the reform of the empire are quite new. For example, from henceforth, therefore, the cause of every accused person shall be publicly judged in accordance with our divine law, after inquiry and examination. And so long as a regular judgment shall not have been pronounced, no one can, secretly or publicly, put another to death by poison or in any other manner. These imperial concessions shall extend to all our subjects, of whatever religion or sect they may be. They shall enjoy them without exceptions. We therefore grant perfect security to the inhabitants of our empire in their lives, their honor, and their fortune, as they are secured to them by the sacred text of our law. Another portion of this edict guarantees, for example, the sacredness of property, that property of individuals cannot be confiscated and cannot be taken away, that it belongs to them by right. Well, it reminds us of our constitution the fact that property and equality are guaranteed, equality of all subjects. It's making this very revolutionary proclamation, and it's coming from above.